Okay, so now we're going to do the Lewis structure of a polyatomic ion, okay? So again, normally you would look at this structure and first want to identify, well, what's the central atom and what are the peripheral atoms? So hopefully you would identify carbon as being the central atom in this case because, both because it can make more bonds and it's less net electronegative than oxygen, okay? So, I want you to draw carbon and your oxygens around and I'm gonna draw it too and we'll see if we get the same answer, okay? So now, what I want you to do is draw your Lewis structures of all of those elements, okay? So do that. So carbon's got how many electrons? Four. Four. And oxygen? Six. Six. So six. Like that. Okay. So I drew them in such a way because I know what the structure is going to be. And also, notice up here, it says that I've got two extra electrons, okay? Most of the time, those extra electrons will go on the most electronegative <coughs> atoms, okay? So, in this case, you've got two uh, electrons, so they're not going to go on the same atom, okay? So, put them on the two, two of the most electronegative atoms. So, in this case, which ones would you put them on, oxygen or carbon? Oxygen. So I put one here and one here, okay? So, or I can put one there, whichever one you want, okay? So I'm going to add one there, and if I do that, then it's got one extra electron. So that means it has a what on it? A negative charge, yeah. Very good. Like that. So over here, if I put an extra electron, that has a negative charge, right? So. This oxygen and this oxygen carry what we call formal charges, okay? The charge is formally on that oxygen, okay? So you've normally seen it like this and not really known where those charges are or thought that they might be throughout the structure. Now you know that they're specifically on a particular atom, okay? So now, how many bonds can this oxygen make? One. one. This one? One. And this one? Two. And this guy? Four. So do we have enough bonds for everybody to go around? Yep. So let's draw our structure. <coughs> So there's the Lewis structure of the carbonate ion. So hopefully you got something that looks like that. So again, formally, you can see where those two negative charges are. We call them formal charges. Where did the charges come from? So up here it says. Yeah, I know, but like, is there another element in there that gives oxygen? We just added two electrons to this thing. Don't they have to come up somewhere? That's all I know. I know on paper it's just there, but like in reality. It's an ion. It's a polyatomic ion. So polyatomic ions have charges. So it's just like saying a chloride ion, you know? So like a chloride ion, something like this. Right? How do you get that negative charge? Well, some at some point in time, it got an electron from somewhere. Yeah, 
that's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying with the polyatomics. <laughs> At some point in time, they got an electron from somewhere, okay? So this chlorine, like if, it, if it's, this chloride is in like sodium chloride or something like that, didn't necessarily get that electron from that sodium atom. You know what I'm saying? Just sometime down the line got an electron, okay? The thing is, is why does it have this structure is probably the better question. Is because it's more stable. Why? Because in this case, everything has a full octet, if that makes sense. Okay, that's probably a better question as opposed to where did it come from. Yeah, I was just saying, like, normally, you know, it's at this stage, but in order for it to be anionized, it has to get to come from somewhere, so I was wondering. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the way yeah, we've I'm been, pres no, no, that's the way we've been presenting it, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't necessarily, the transfer happens right before it becomes an ion, you know? That's not what necessarily happens. Any other questions on this? I won't include.